Hey, we are rounding out your candidates, your question segments this morning with the final front runner of candidates in the mayoral by-election. And Mark Saunders is uh, live back here on the couch at CP24 Breakfast. Mark, good to see you again this morning. Thanks for joining us. There we go again. Good All to right, see you. yeah. <laughs> and it was a couple of weeks ago you came in here and you started your campaign of, you know, Saunders is the only way to stop Saunders Olivia is Chow. Yes. Mm -hmm. Saunders is how you stop Olivia Chow. You bet. How has that gone? Because according to the recent poll numbers, your numbers have kind of been sort of hovering in that same range here. What has the actual response been from your take? Oh, the, the response has been good, and I, I can tell you why. First off, more volunteers. So people have searched and called in. Mm. They're volunteering, so I have more numbers there. And the second thing, within the past week or so, a lot more people asking for signs. So mm. Mm. we are moving in the right direction. It's exactly how we uh, have accorded things to go, and I'm excited where we're going to get to on the finish line here. Okay, okay it'll be interesting to see, and, uh, yeah, thanks for sharing it from your perspective. Okay, so let's get started, Mark. Time for the questions from the viewers. Are let's you ready? Let's go. Let's okay, go. Let's okay, let's do this. So uh, Jason writing in this morning to say, uh, I would like to know how the candidates plan to make renting more affordable. Yeah, renting is always about supply, and I think Toronto historically has failed miserably. When you look at the existing process, which none of the other candidates will talk about, it takes three to five years for uh, a, an approval to go through. That is not good, that's not healthy, and that's why the City of Toronto has scored last when it comes to pushing approvals through. But when you don't have enough supply, you have critical problems. Case in point, Scarborough. A couple of years ago, for rooming houses, for the students in particular, it was $400. And because they're illegal, they couldn't report anything. Now it's $800. Not only is it $800, if you leave, someone else will occupy that position right away. So it speaks to shortage. We have to build, we have to build more, we have to build faster, but we have to build for affordability, supportive housing, workforce, rank geared towards income. But it starts with the journey of the process, fixing the process, and then getting the right people in to get those builders to build. Okay, another question coming from viewer uh, Bill writing in, my friend was buzzed by a vehicle yesterday while she was riding her bicycle on the edge of a bike lane. Is Mr. Saunders concerned that his anti-bike lane rhetoric encourages such dangerous behavior? Yeah, well, Bill, listen, I hope it doesn't uh, encourage any kind of negative behavior. When you're on a highway or roadway, you have responsibilities and you have to do everything you can to prevent loss of life. My bike lane story is what I've always said. It has to be common sense. The major arteries are not where the bike lanes are. And I have spoke about this yesterday. I was in the Kingsway. The businesses are furious about what's going on. Government should not be leading this narrative. They should not make it a political thing. It can be done with common sense, working with people that are mostly impacted by it. We can't afford to lose small businesses. But at the same time, when we talk about gridlock, and we are number one in Canada mm -hmm. for horrible congestion, that has to be fixed. Because if it's not fixed, businesses decline, quality of life, 23 working days, sitting there in parks, productivity, and it goes on and on. It can be done properly. And with my leadership, it will be done properly. All right. Uh, Mr. Saunders, uh, Megan writing in to ask, you were police chief for 10 years, so I'm curious, why is it that you now have a plan for safety and how can people trust that you will improve safety? And that's a great question, Megan. I've always said, when, especially when I was chief, if you have followed my fantastic journey, you can't arrest your way through this. That is not good business when it comes to community safety. It has to be more holistic. Being mayor, I will have access to all of those agencies, starting off with creating that mayor's wellness circle, having every agency on board, and where, where do you play a role when it comes to people that live with mental health? People do not choose to have mental health. It is a health issue. However, when we have 40% of people in incarcerated that live with mental health, we're going about it wrong. My plan is a simple plan with my experienced leadership. I know that I can make a positive difference by looking after things that don't have to be crimes, those social issues, people that are suffering with addiction, making sure the right resources are in play, outward facing resources and law enforcement. When you combine the two and now I'll have access to do that, you will see an improvement. You will definitely see differences out there for a safer, healthier city. Okay, hope that answers Megan's question. Mm -hmm. Mo has written in as well this morning uh, saying you've been very vocal in accusing Olivia Chow of egregious tax increases. Is, will you be increasing taxes at any time during your tenure if you're elected mayor? No, I will not be going above the rate of inflation. You know, and this is a concern again. I, I was out talking to a large group. They are concerned about what Olivia Chow is going to be doing. And when it talks to what she's going to be doing, our team has put it together. 25% of property tax. We're talking about an extra $2,000 on your table. No plan whatsoever for public safety either. This is not what our city needs right now. When we're talking about not having gas in your car, 
car, food on your table. These are real concerns, real concerns that I will be addressing and making sure that we're getting the value for money with the money that's being spent because it can be done so much better than it has been right now. Okay, next up, our viewer Bob writing in uh, this question. Supportive housing has been underfunded for years, partly owing to the lack of housing options, and although illegal, the city has given permission by inaction for people to camp in public spaces. As mayor, how will you recommend people who won't accept the city's offer of alternative housing be removed from public spaces? Well, first off, encampments are not lawful, so they will be removed. How they'll be removed is going to be different with my plan, because my plan is going to be making sure we invest in ideas identifying who is there. We will have people, first off, there are people that are just criminals. Let's make no mistake about that. There have been people that have been there are criminals. They will be definitely removed the proper way. But we have people because of economic strife that are there. We have people that live with mental health. And we have people that are suffering from addiction. Making sure we have an understanding of who we have in that network and not just calling it one thing. And then making sure that we have them out and where they need to be. But we have to bring those parks back. We can't have these discarded needles everywhere. We can't have the behavior that's going on. The fact that the fire department's gone over to over 800 uh, calls over the past couple of years, and people are dying there. They're dying from uh, drug overdose, uh, there's sexual violence in these areas. That's not a safe environment. We have to have the right dignity and provide the right resources to make sure that those encampments right across our city are gone. And we can't have it a city where the culture of encampments is okay, because that's what City Hall is doing right now by ignoring it. Okay, Mark Saunders, we got through a lot of our viewer mm -hmm. questions this morning here on Your Candidates, Your Questions. So thanks for joining us and answering those questions. Hopefully that's helped some of our uh, audience members uh, understand a little more about your campaign. Thanks for being here. Yeah, uh, great seeing you. you guys thanks, again. Thanks, Mark. Thanks. Good to have you.